Hi, this is Susan Young, author of Seven Steps to Pursue Your Passion, a creative solution for choosing your profession. You know, I designed these steps with you in mind. And my goal with this interview is to share with you how my guests discovered a profession pursuing their passion by following these same seven steps in my book. I hope you enjoy the interview and learn the importance of understanding who you are before you choose what you want to do. Have you ever thought about being a life leadership and business coach? Mark is going to give us a behind-the-scenes look at how he discovered his passion as a coach. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm good, Susan. How are you? I'm great. Mark, why don't you give people a little bit of a background and understanding of who you are and how you went about going into this profession? Great. I would love to. So, um, so I became a life leadership and business coach uh, back in 2006. Um, and basically, my professional background uh, is that I have a, a bachelor's degree in psychology, a master's degree in counseling and human development, and I used to work in higher education, counseling and advising college students who lived on campus, and also leading developmental and educational programs for students. The theme through that job and through others that I have held since then, uh, I realized that began to emerge, had to do with training and educating, and also helping individuals just figure their lives out, basically. Um, and that theme, like I said, continued itself through other jobs that I had had in the corporate world um, and in the nonprofit world. Um, and then eventually I decided that I wanted to create my own business uh, doing some kind of corporate training. I was born to be in front of the room. So I did that and then eventually heard about life coaching as a profession um, and decided to go for my certification as a, uh, as a life and business coach. And uh, so I completed my certification and also quickly became an instructor at the institute that I received my certification at, which is IPEC, the Institute for Professional Excellence in Coaching. And I now lead their programs uh, in several different cities around North America um, and I have a very busy practice and business with training, teaching coaches, and also coaching individuals on various issues in their lives and in their careers, um, as well as corporate coaching, um, you know, coaching managers, business, ex business executives, etc. And I absolutely, absolutely love it and feel like I've discovered what I'm born to do. And that's what we're trying to do with everyone who's on the call for them to listen to this and be able to discover that for themselves. So now, Mark, you know I wrote this book, Seven Steps to Pursue Your Passion, and I'd like to go yep. through those seven steps so that when people are listening, they can get an idea of whether coaching might be the type of profession they're interested in. Because when you talk about all this, it's great that you do it, but what's more important is what's behind the scenes. In other words, what abilities you bring to it. Just like you said, you, you were born to be in front of the classroom. I want to help people see what their natural abilities are so that they can choose. So mm -hmm. the first step that I talk about is understanding your learning style. And by learning style, I'm talking about connecting it to your application style. So when you think about how you learn and, more importantly, how you apply what you're doing, you know, some people like professions where they're speaking, other people are very visual, and other people are very physical. They like moving. So tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about the types of things you like to learn and, more importantly, how you like to apply them when it comes to just your style, you know, that, that type yep. of thing, whether you're a visual, auditory, or kinesthetic type person. Absolutely. So I tend to be uh, auditory and kinesthetic uh, um, uh, is where my dominance is. Um, I'm all about talking and listening, more talking than listening at times. Um, and uh, that's really how I learn best is by talking through things with others, having conversations about concepts um, yes. rather than you know, reading it and studying it and learning it and taking a test on it. It's, it's really about interacting with it. Uh, in a conversational fashion. Uh, that's really what works best for me. Um, and it, the same applies to when it comes time to uh, creating content for my workshops um, or for my radio show or anything like that. Um, I can't sit there and think about what I want to do and write it down and say it. 
I get into a conversation with somebody about it or I get into a conversation with my radio show guest where we just start talking about what they do and it just generates a conversation and then, and then the content grows from there. So for me, it's primarily all about talking and listening and interacting. I'm a very high contact kind of person. Look at the types of things you wanted to learn. What were the things that really excited you about learning about? Yeah, any time that I got to talk, that's when I got excited, <laughs> um, which uh, anybody who knows me listening to this is probably rolling their eyes going, oh, you needed to tell us that? We, we, we wouldn't have known. Um, it's kind of, I, I have the gift of gab. So being able okay. to talk, but it's not so much about talking more than it is what talking provides, which is the ability to yeah. process the information out loud, test it out, ask questions and relate it to what I already know and then have those things validated um, and interacted with by somebody else. That solidifies the concepts for me. Uh, okay. So, you know, getting up and presenting something in front of the room or participating in a discussion uh, was really what would always light me up the most. So that gets into the next step, which is natural abilities. So natural mm-hmm. abilities, we talk about verbal linguistic ability or, you know, interpersonal skills or mm-hmm. the like. So that kind of takes it to the next level. So when mm-hmm. you think about your natural abilities, like not everybody is good at having empathy for another person, drawing them out, um, having good verbal skills, knowing how to get up in front of the room. So tell me about the natural abilities that you bring to the profession that allows you to do what you do. Uh, I would say in a nutshell, I'm a performer. Um, that's what I was born to do. Um, so I'm a performer, I'm an entertainer, I'm an educator. Um, so my, those natural abilities are, in fact, you hit upon them when you, when you gave your examples uh, in, in asking me the question. Uh, empathy, uh, being able to really hear where someone else is at and really draw them out, uh, draw out their participation. Um, I also am known for my sense of humor, um, and how that's very disarming and puts people at ease, which creates a safe learning environment and creates an environment where people are, are comfortable being open uh, when talking with me about things that might otherwise be you know, quite personal or challenging uh, or not comfortable to talk about. Uh, so I think those would be really the key, uh, the key things for me um, it, when, you know, when, it, when it comes to those sort of natural, natural abilities. The next step is really about personality. And personality mm-hmm. type, one of the personality types is an entertainer. So how does, how does your personality affect the way you express your desire to have these conversations? Because we all have, you know, we know the difference between introvert and extrovert. So tell me mm-hmm. a little bit about, you know, when you describe your personality traits and what really your personality kind of needs to, to be energized. You know, in other words, do you need an audience? Do you just need one-on-one? You know, mm-hmm. where did this entertainer come from? So tell me a little bit about your personality traits. Sure. So as a performer and an entertainer, of course, what does one need but an audience? So it's funny that, um, you know, when you're saying that, I'm like, what do I need? What do I need? An audience, of course. And it's funny that that was something that got me in trouble as a kid. So, you know, we can look to, I believe we can look to what did we do well as a kid and excel in as a kid as clues to who we are and what we might want to do with our lives. But also, what did we get in trouble for doing? Uh, also can give us clues because I feel that, at least for me, all the things that I wanted to focus on that were not rewarded are all the clues to what I was going to be successful in one day. What did I get most in trouble for as a kid? Talking. (laughs) Um, And now I get to do it for a living. So, um, so, you know, when I grew up and matured a little bit, um, I was able to, to, to hone that gift um, and actually make it work for me instead of against me. Um, so I think that, uh, so with, you know, with my personality, it's, it's, it's about being very extroverted. Um, I love to talk and connect with people and share. So when someone is listening to me, I'm, you know, an open book, um, and I really, really enjoy that. When someone is curious about me, um, I, I really like that, and uh, uh, it, it helps spark me to become curious uh, about the other person um, and who they are. Um, and uh, so that's really, that's really kind of where it lives for me in terms of personality. It's being extroverted, um, needing, wanting, preferring an audience, 
um, and, and a sense of curiosity uh, is, is, is part of me uh, as well. In fact, it's funny. Most people are afraid of talking in front of groups. Uh, for me, I can't wait to do it. I live for it. I love it. The largest group I ever spoke in front of was 1,000 people, and it was something that was booked four months in advance. I could not wait the four months for it to happen. I just couldn't wait. Um, and, you know, and then I teach public speaking skills as one of the classes that I teach, and people are terrified of getting in front of a room of 10 people to give a sample talk. Right. Um, so I, I love that I get to share my gift of loving that with folks that need to learn that for their profession or their life. Um, and they can get to see that it can be an enjoyable thing. When you think about another personality trait is whether you are you know, kind of spontaneous or more structured. Now mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about that part of your personality because in order to you know, coach people and have a schedule or whatever, you have to be very organized. Structure is actually something that while it serves me well when I have it, I'm not very good at creating it necessarily um, or even keeping to it. Uh, and I actually learned uh, probably about a year and a half ago, uh, I really learned how that was part of my gift as opposed to something that was a lack for me. Um, I related to that as a lack, and then I realized, no, my gifts are stronger in other areas, and as a result, that one has to be a little bit weaker. So what I've done is I've hired a virtual assistant who takes care of all the structure pieces for me and kind of helps to manage me. Uh, so when people need to make appointments with me or whatnot, I'm often like, okay, contact Lori. She runs my life. Um, and I see. The <laughs> structure doesn't come natural to you, but it is a big part of your profession to be that structured. Exactly, exactly. The, the idea of structure comes naturally to me. I can visualize structure. I can absolutely see how it would work. When it comes to implementing it and keeping it implemented, that's where the struggle for me is. So okay. I find the more external structure that, is, that, that, that I can create, whether that's putting somebody else in the role of providing structure or you know, something along those lines, the, the, the more successful uh, I can be in that area. Okay. Now we get into the, the next step. We get into activity. What are the specific activities that you really enjoy about, about your profession? Yeah, I, I would say that as of, the th- of the three that you mentioned, speaking and sharing ideas are the things that light me up the most. Preparing that is the thing that I would actually rather scratch my nails on the blackboard and listen to that. Because okay. <laughs> um, I don't know what it is, but it's the, the preparing for it that it, it's so unengaging for me because it doesn't necessarily involve anybody else. Um, right. That's why, that's why when I'm preparing for my radio show, talking with my guest uh, you know, and, and planning the show together uh, is really what helps me create that content. Otherwise, it's it's just drudgery for me. So I really, really enjoy the interaction. I enjoy the conversation. Um, I enjoy teaching. I really like contributing in a way that helps somebody see themselves in a way that they didn't see themselves before. Um, I've always been drawn to the whole notion of personal transformation. You know, whenever I've seen, you know, somebody like Tony Robbins or just anybody on, you know, a TV show, any coach on a TV show where they work with somebody, you know, live in front of a room, and the person has some kind of a transformation or insight about themselves yes. that's just a real breakthrough for them. I, I just remember always saying, I want to be able to do that someday. Um, and now I do. And that's really great. As far as business versus personal coaching, um, it's interesting. Yes, they're very different. And no, they're not. <laughs> um, what, I, what I find, and I teach this concept uh, when I teach the IPEC students, is that the process of coaching is the same whether you're doing it in a company, in a business, or you're doing it for an individual. It's the application of it and the frame of it that's different. The situations that people are bringing to you that are ultimately the material for what you're working with, those are certainly going to be very, very different, and it's helpful to have certainly experience in some of those areas to be able to do that. Um, So it's really, um, you know, who is it that works in companies and corporations it's people. people, and it's people that get out of bed in the morning and have a life and want to be successful and want to be happy and want to have work-life balance and feel like they have time to spend with their families and, and, and live their lives, as well as not just have a job, but really be contributing in a career in a way that's, that's meaningful to them. So one of the basic tenets that I work by is that each one of us um, is wired like almost like we're hardwired to carry 
out a specific role and function that contributes in a very specific way to our part of the world. And uh, that's what our lifelong spiritual mission is, is to discover what that is, which is some of what you talk about in your book. Um, And it's about discovering what that is and then creating a life that is that, that that calls you to contribute that and allows you to contribute that. That aligns and with it. And that could be in your personal life or it could be in your work life. For most of us, we, we strive to have it present in both. And that's the theme that ties the two together for me, which makes uh, the work very similar regardless of which realm it's in. Okay, that that's interesting because that gets into the next step, which is about contribution. So to me, mm-hmm. contribution is really the bigger picture the, the yeah. concept of, okay, how are you using these activities to change people? So when I look at the contribution, I look at what is the actual contribution you're making to people, but then more importantly, I go over the connection. In other words, where is the personal connection for you that makes that contribution satisfying? And then compensation. I ask people, okay, what makes this particular contribution satisfying? Because there has to be some reward in it for us that makes doing it rewarding. So when you look mm-hmm. at the kind of big picture of, of – um, your contribution, what is it that makes this contribution rewarding? So tell me what you feel is the greatest contribution you are making. Uh, The greatest contribution that I'm making um, that I believe is sort of like, you know, how I'm designed, (laughs) Uh, like some of us are forks, some of us are knives, and some of us are spoons. We each have a very unique and specific function, yet we all contribute to being able to, we all contribute to eating the meal, right? Right. Um, And if you try to use a knife as a fork, you get a very different result than if you use a fork as a fork or a knife as a knife, right? How it's meant to be used, yes. Exactly. So, I, so my contribution to the meal, so to speak, um, yes. relationships and vision. Um, that's that's really what I believe I contribute. Relationships and vision. I connect. I have very strong value on connection. So I connect people. I connect with people. I connect people to each other, and I help people see a vision of what's possible. Um, what's possible that's bigger than where we are right now. Where we are right now, and whatever we're experiencing right now, I don't believe is ever really about now. <laughs> It's about something bigger and greater, okay. and whatever we're experiencing now is just sort of the, the strategy for getting there, but we're really up to something much bigger. And I like connecting people to that, that thing that's bigger because then they can make more conscious choices about what they should create in the here and the now. Um, and then they're much, more, uh, they're much more fulfilled. So I love for people to be able to see possibility in their lives that they have not yet seen or that they saw at some point before, but somehow lost. I like being able to bring that back. I like to create a sense of curiosity and wonder and, uh, for, for people. Like even if they don't have the answers, I like them to be able to look at their lives and say, what if, what if, and what would happen if, and be lit up by that, be motivated by that, and be able to begin to look at life a little differently. You know, a world-famous magician many years ago, Doug Henning, um, had a quote that just I, I, that I just love, and uh, I actually used to. He, he was my idol. I used to be a magician as a kid. There was the okay. entertainer and performer in me, right? Okay. And the thing that I always loved about magic is that it it created this wow for people. Yes. And it made people wonder why does that happen? How can that be, right? right. And his quote, Doug Henning's quote, um, was, "The art of magic is to create wonder, and when we live with a sense of wonder." our lives become filled with joy. And I think nothing can be further from the truth. I love creating that sense of wonder so that people could have joy in their lives, including me. And that's what I get out of it. It gives me joy. It gives me satisfaction. And because relationships are such a core value of mine, it, 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 makes, me, it makes me feel needed in a very positive way. And that creates connection and relationship. And that's right. what I get out of it. Right. No, that's great. And you know what? That brings us to our next step, which is people. What type of people do you want to be around? Because based on your profession, it is definitely going to influence who you come in contact with. Mm-hmm. So as as a coach, I would tend to think you like being around positive people or people who do want to change um, yeah. that that 
want that that vision for their life as opposed to people who are kind of, you know, not interested in changing at all. So tell me a little bit about not just the people you help, but the specific people you really enjoy being around, the type of yeah. people that really kind of light you up. I, I would say, and again, you kind of hit it on the head there, it's, it's people who really uh, embrace growth and change, um, you know, as opposed to resisting it. Um, yeah. People who... Uh, want to look at their lives differently uh, it, when, when the way that they're looking at it might not be working, or at least have an awareness that that's possible, um, even if they don't quite know how to do it. Uh, I like being around creative people who can look at the world and their own lives a little differently and more creatively and maybe even less traditionally and more outside the box. Um, and, you know, it's one of the things that I find in a lot of corporate environments is it's all about boxes and where do you fit, where do you yes. belong. And uh, I like people to challenge that. Um, I like being around people who, like you said, are positive and have a sense of curiosity about the world. Um, and, you know, that, that sense of wonder that I talked about earlier. Um, I like being around people who have a really great sense of humor and a lightness with which they view life. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of heavy significance to life um, in a social context for me is, is not enjoyable uh, for me to be around. Now, in a professional context, if there's somebody that's looking to shift a very heavy and significant way of looking at life, and they're open, you know, to working on that, I find tremendous joy in working with them and helping them make right. that shift. Absolutely. Right. Um, but when I'm not working and I'm enjoying my life socially or just enjoying my workday, um, I, you know, I, I certainly prefer to, pe- to be around people who are, who are um, Light. really enjoying life and, and, and just yes. are always up to making it that much better. Right, right. No, I, I totally agree with you. And the last step that we go into really is lifestyle. And that's something, again, that you alluded to, that they want to improve their lifestyle. So when you mm-hmm. look at your profession and the lifestyle it has created because I I tell people when it comes to when you work, it's like, okay, do you work days? Do you work nights? Do you work weekends? Do you work holidays? Do you travel? What's the lifestyle Mm -hmm. that you've created that makes your profession satisfying? Um, I actually love the lifestyle that I, that I, that I've created and I actually evolved into it more than creating it, but I guess evolving into something is, is a way of creating it, right? We create our lives by the choices we make every day. Right. Um, so what that, what that looks like, which I really, really enjoy, is I work uh, primarily from home, and um, I see my clients either by phone or in person in my home. I give my clients that choice, um, whichever works better for them. Some clients like more face-to-face contact. Some people are very busy, and you know it's easier on the phone. So really whatever they prefer is fine, uh, is fine with me. Um, when I'm not at home, I'm out visiting a client site, so I might be you know, on site at, at a company or an organization that's working for me, and that could be you know, anywhere uh, in the world. Um, you know, so I've certainly had clients that I've gone and done trainings for uh, that are all around the U.S., coast to coast, including Canada, um, and uh, even in Europe uh, as well. So I love that I get to travel. I travel okay. quite a bit, actually, and then sometimes see clients, my individual private clients, by phone remotely because I'm not local and home uh, a lot of time. Right. Um, okay. So, you know, I, it, it's rare that I have two days in a row that look the same as a work day. Um, and, you know, I'm either booked pretty heavily throughout the day with one client after another, and some of those are in person and some are by phone, or one might be, you know, uh, one of my radio show guests and we're working on that, or it might be a client, or it might be doing this interview like I'm doing with you. And then other times things might be more spread out during the day. And so in addition to doing work-related stuff, I also get to you know, go and have lunch with a friend or go do some shopping that I've wanted to do or, or you know, take a break and go out for a walk. And you know, I, I live in New York City. I live in Manhattan. Um, so there's certainly never a deficit of where to walk <laughs> or what right. to do, never a deficit of, a deficit of stimulation. Uh, okay. So that's, you know, that's very exciting as well. So you um, like the diversity? I love it. I really, really okay. love it. So you really like the, the diversity of being able to be in one location, to travel, to see people in person, to see people, you know, talk to people over the phone, to train. So that, for you, that lifestyle works for you. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So, so the idea of going to the same place every day and doing the same thing over and over as a routine, that would not work for you? That would not work for me, and it never did when I did it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, you really need to understand lifestyle as part of one of the steps when you consider a profession. So now, Mark, yeah. if people want to learn more about you, what is the best way for them to contact you? Well, let me give you my, uh, my website and uh, my office telephone number. So uh, my website is www.markshaw.com, which is my full name. And I'm going to spell it because it is easy to misspell it, and then you won't find me. <laughs> so that's okay. www.markshaw.com. Mark is with a K, so it's M-A-R-K. S as in Sam, C as in Charles, H-A-L-L dot com. M-A-R-K-S-C-H-A-L-L dot com. That's markshaw dot com. And uh, that's my website. You can contact me through there. And actually my phone number is, is up on there as well, um, which is 646-201-5318. Um, and you'll also find information there about my biweekly radio show if you'd like to tune in and listen to that as well. Uh, and find that enjoyable. I just want to thank you so much for the interview. It was uh, it was a pleasure. Ah, oh, you're very welcome. Thank you, Susan, so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, and it was fun. It's enjoyable. I love your seven steps, and uh, it was extremely enjoyable for me too. So thank you. Hi, this is Susan Young. I hope you enjoyed the interview. Now I want to ask you, are you passionate about your profession? During the interview, I covered the seven steps you need to follow to discover a profession pursuing your passion. To learn more about my system, go to ProfessionPrepAcademy.com.